Want to use a sled to maximize your lower body gains? Watch this. Our next caller is Pete from North Carolina. What's up, Pete? How can we help you? How are you guys doing? Good, man. All right. Um, first of all, again, I do want to thank every thank you guys for everything um, that you provide. Uh, just give you a little background. In, I am 62 years old. I am a former physique competitor. I uh, got a diagnosis of non-small cell lung cancer in June, so had to put all that stuff on the back burner. Uh, so just wanted to thank you guys again for talking about how talking about how food makes you feel because as a physique competitor, you always like measuring all that other stuff. And when I found out that diagnosis, I, uh, yeah, started to go off the deep end a little bit, but started to reel it in a little bit because of a lot of the things that you guys have provided. So getting wanted to thank you for that. Appreciate you in remission. You're all good now, Pete. Um, I am taking a, an oral chemotherapy. Uh, so I'll be on that for years. Okay. They tell me anyway. So okay. but we'll find out. It's a learning process. All right. So, all right. Um, so my question is, you guys have mentioned a lot about using the weight sled. And I was just wondering what workouts for the weight sled would look like, uh, whether you would do it, let's say, if you were doing MAPS anabolic, if you would do that on the trigger session days, would you alternate, you know, between like heavy and light sessions? Would you push for distance? Would you push for time? Uh, also, you know, if you had a recommendation as to what type of weight sled one might buy for their house. No, great question. Okay. Fun so, question. Yeah, yeah. So with MAPS Anabolic, here's how I would do it. I would do it on the trigger session days, and I would spend about 15 to 20 minutes pushing the sled. Wow, you would do trigger days. On huh? the other days, yeah. Well, this will be fun. We're going to be different. If you do it on the days, the foundational days, then I would do a couple sets, two or three, I guess, sets of the sled before you move into your squats. But otherwise, you can do them very frequently, and I would do, like I said, 15 to 20 minutes uh, on, on those trigger session days. And what you want to focus on if you do it that way is technique, form, and connection. Um, so you'd be pushing it for... 50 yards or so, and the goal is to get with a nice, deep, full full step, push all the way through, move to the next step, push all the way through, something along those lines. And the goal is really have good technique the entire time, a nice, consistent cadence. Um, and like I guess I'd keep it around 50 yards. If you want to go heavier, okay. you can go heavier with a shorter distance. But you want the intensity. If you do it in that way, I want the intensity to be about moderate. Okay, So the, the idea is you want to feel it a little bit. But really, you're just trying to slowly get better at it, and little by little, you can add uh, resistance to it. Sal, remind me, it, MAPS Anabolic is uh, back squats, front squats, deadlifts are the three, yeah. in the, the three, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually. So my uh, my recommendation will be a little bit different, and uh, none, neither one of these is right or wrong. It's just, I think, whatever you enjoy doing or what you're more like. So I have a tendency, still after all these years of training and knowing better and knowing my body, to uh, especially when it comes to squatting and deadlifting, and uh, I, I overreach. I like to push the weight. I like to get after it. And uh, even though I know better, uh, I t and I tend to flirt with the overdoing it a little bit line a lot, and I love to use the sled when I do that. So let's say it was a uh, you know back squat day, and I decided to put on probably more weight on the bar than I should have or do an extra set or, you know, do more reps than what's programmed. And, and then the next day I'm feeling it. So when I hit the next workout where it's probably front squats and anabolic, I actually replace the front squats with driving the sled that day. Um, and then I can go a little more intense than what Sal's recommending. So yeah. Sal's recommending on trigger, which if I if I do on trigger days, that means I'm assuming that I'm training my legs the other three days a week. I'm probably going to do it uh, significantly light and easy, and it'd be more like speed work or like slow mobility driving the sled. And it's more almost, and I'm thinking like recovery. I'm not thinking about moving some mm -hmm. serious weight on sled. But if I use it in replace of a leg exercise in anabolic, 
I can actually kind of push the weight a little bit more and I can get away with pushing heavy weight and it doesn't quite do as much damage as say the front squat or the back squat will do it. So that's how I like to use it. And I, and I use it with any of our programs because uh, most of our programs have, you know, at least three days a week of leg training and I do train my legs pretty hard and I tend to overreach there. And when I do the next leg routine, I replace whatever leg exercise I had initially set up for now sled driving that day yeah so i've i've done a bit of both and and um so in terms of the intense way that i've applied it and, and really try to build up work capacity something like you'd see in map strong um you know is a great fit to, to incorporate heavy sled pushes heavy sled drags uh and that's all you know within those those type of in-between workouts um, and the work capacity sessions, I should say. Um, but in terms of like how I, I use it frequently, it's more like low to moderate intensity and that way I'm just building up a lot of volume. So, uh, you know, in between, it's just such a, it's such a valuable tool to, uh, so there's two different types of sleds I would recommend. So there's one's more like a prowler sled where you have the handles where you can push, uh, and then there's also like a sled drag, uh, like a fat boy sled rogue provides, for instance, uh, where you could actually like get a harness and then drag it backwards, drag it, you know, laterally. Uh, and you're able to get a lot of those types of stimulus and movement for your legs that you don't really get, uh, because you don't tend to train a lot in different planes of motion. So this is going to build up volume, uh, with that, which is going to get your secondary muscles, your stabilizing muscles to respond better, uh, with your lifts. And also it's very recuperative if you keep the intensity low, uh, to, to, to drive blood flow and to get, you know, that healing process to really, uh, you know, accelerate. So that's, pretty much how I use the, the the sleds. And now we didn't address, he asked um, as far as like the distance or whatever. So I, you know, I use like a, if it's really, really heavy and, and, and I think of it like you're almost like you're doing like walking lunges. So if I'm doing like walking lunges, I'm going to do, you know, 10 and 10 on each leg. Mm -hmm. So whatever that distance is, I don't know. It's probably I go like 40 yards I was say 40 Yeah, is about the gauge that I've tried to kind of prescribe. But yeah, it's it can vary depending on the space that you have. And, um, you know, and you can kind of double that if you have to kind of go down 20 yards back, 20 yards back. You know, you can. Yeah, but but I think distance is probably more appropriate for this. Yeah, I mean, you're you're you look at, you know, the, the kind of 40 yard mark. But what if you'll notice and I've done it before where I've counted and it's like I'm basically doing you know 20 lunges right so it's like doing 10 and 10 on each side because you're obviously alternating as you push a sled so I'd kind of keep it uh, on that if I I'm going to do uh, and how I decide like the load is if I'm going to do like a shorter distance just like say the 20 yards down and I want to go as heavy as I can I'm going to go really heavy and I'm only going to go there if I'm doing more recuperative work, like kind of Sal and Justin, I'm going to go a much lighter load and I'm going to go there and back, right? So so that's kind of how I decide on the distance or how many reps I'm doing is based off how I'm using the tool. Am I using it more towards a recuperative day and get like a volume builder, kind of like what Sal and Justin, or if I'm replacing a leg day training session, which is how I use it more often, I'm going to load more and I'm not going to go as far as distance. I'm going to really try and move some weight. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, well, Pete. Thanks for calling in. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, the sled is super versatile, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's actually like a million and one different. Yeah, ways nobody was know. nobody was wrong, and there's it's a preference thing, really. Mm -hmm. I just lo I love using it uh, to be able to add volume and frequency, and not have a lot of Same. damage. I love, yeah. and I do do sometimes just my whole leg workout, and that's yeah. like what you do. Like if I feel overrun, yep, um, you know, like I overdid it, then I'll do that. But it's it's such a versatile tool. That and you can do it so often if you do it right, you can do it so often and get yeah. great great gains from it. Yeah. Yeah, it makes it fun. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.